Welcome to New Possibilities. I speak truth to power without fear. Today I'm going to elaborate on a discussion that I had in the comment section to one of LA's videos. And the name of LA's video is The Agent Fools This Sector. And I will include a link to that video in the description box to this video. But basically what I said was this. I said that that white boy does not belong in this sector. And the white boy that I was referring to is Josh. And I'd said that Mike Mills should not have given that condescending white boy a forum. And I pointed out how I was truly disgusted and sickened to hear African Americans refer to each other as niggers and coons in the presence of this white boy. Now I'm going to break down my statement because once I made this statement, there were a lot of replies to the statement. Many people were attacking my opinion, and I welcome debate. I have no problem engaging in a debate in the comment sections. And I just felt the need to elaborate on my views here uh, to give you all a sense of where I was coming from. In this video right here, I'm going to address the main points. Uh, a couple of trolls came at me in the comment section, but I will not uh, further engage them in this video. I'm not going to mention their names. And I refuse to even address a lot of the points that they made because some of the points that they made were just uh, silly points about semantics. So I'm not going to engage in that discussion. But I will explain what I mean. First of all, when I said that that white boy does not belong in that sector, this is what I meant. First of all, I refer to it as that sector, not because I'm not a part of it, not because I don't engage in discussions or even have friendly type of relationships with the people in that sector. I refer to it as that sector as a sign of protest to a lot of the things that go on in that sector, to distance myself from the negativity. Because here in this sector, or as I refer to it, that sector. You have people who have zero integrity. You have people who have no problem attacking children, who have no problem attacking the deceased, who have no problem attacking people's wives, people's girlfriends, people's family members. You have people that talk about committing perverted acts against children. You have people threatening to engage in violence here on YouTube. And you have a, a crowd, a legion of trolls that cheer on the foolishness, that cheer on the stupidity, that cheer on this negativity. Instead of people engaging in enlightening discussions or even just having um, friendly entertainment or even friendly back and forth or comedy, you have people who spend their days and nights tearing each other down. So I can't identify with that. I don't celebrate that. I distance myself from that and I condemn it. You know, there are people in this sector who I respect. They put out enlightening videos, thought provoking videos. They discuss issues that matter. And I respect those brothers and sisters. So when I talk about that sector, when I'm talking about how I, I, um, 
do not like many of the things that I see here. I'm not referring to those brothers and those sisters. So that's the reason why I use the word that sector, that phrase, that sector. Now, with respect to Josh, you know, people will accuse me of racism because I say that that white boy does not belong in, you know, this sector. I don't say that simply because of the pigment of his skin. I don't hate white people. I hate racism. I hate white supremacy. I hate police brutality. I hate white privilege. And I hate white paternalism. See, we all understand that there are white people who have fought for civil rights, who are progressive, who have sacrificed to make this country and the world a better place. My statement is not directed at people like that. But we have to understand that this guy, Josh, is not one of those people. He's not some civil rights worker. He's not some revolutionary or some progressive. This is some rich white guy. He's a part of the, the, the people who rule this country and this world, a part of the elite oppressive class in this country. And he made his views clear in his response to LA. He talked about how he doesn't agree with anything there's strong black men like Umar Johnson, people like Tariq Nasheed, and people like Minister Farrakhan. He indicated that he does not agree with anything that those people say, anything that comes out of their mouths, basically. So how progressive can this guy be if he doesn't stand with strong black men? if he doesn't stand with us, with our people, with people that are recognized as distinguished leaders in our community. Those men that I just named off are highly respected. Of course, they are controversial, but they are respected men in our community. They are men that spend their lives and their time and energy fighting and sacrificing for black people. Now, if he says that he doesn't agree with anything that they say, what does that say about him? What does that say about his position on the issues? So he's not some progressive white person who is genuinely concerned about the plight of African-American people. So let's get that straight. And the reason why I refer to him as condescending is because I've, I've seen his in, his interactions with others. I've heard him on the Mike Mills show and they had a program about Nigeria, a program that featured the notorious tap dancing, boot licking, butt kissing, Uncle Ruckus, Painless Rizzi. And as I listened to the program, I saw that Josh agreed with Painless Risen on a lot of the issues. That in and of itself tells us a lot about this guy, Josh, that people are defending. It tells us a lot about what kind of person he is. He talked about how he wants to learn from people who are different from him. That's why he's in this sector. What the hell are you learning? That's what I want to know. What are you learning from the people that you are interacting with? You get on a, a radio show. The program occasionally talks about a, important issues like Nigeria and other issues like police brutality. But a large segment of the program 
features African Americans basically gossiping, talking about people, fussing and fighting, calling each other's names. I mean, what are you learning from that? What are you learning from listening to a program where a man talks about how he's going to shoot somebody in the head and make their head into a bowling ball, basically? What do you learn from that kind of behavior? From those kind of statements, what are you learning? You're not learning much. And in your video, you, you mentioned that you enjoy the entertainment aspect of these of this sector, rather. You enjoy being entertained. And when I've heard that, and when I just reflect on you and what you represent, I just think about the situation. You don't see these people in this sector as your equals. We are a source of amusement for you a source of entertainment for you, something like a social experiment. Or better yet, you are, as I said in the comment section, you're like a patron going to a zoo, watching the animals and being entertained by the animals. Or a tourist on a safari looking out into the jungle as the animals interact with each other. We amuse you. You don't see African Americans as your equals. It's all in your the tone of your speech. You know, the way you described African people, the way you talked about African people on the Mike Mills show, tells me that you're a condescending person. It, t it, it makes it clear that you are a very condescending person. And when you lectured L.A. in your video, I finally got around to watching your video today. You sat and you lectured this black man as if he was your child. As if he was your child. And the sad thing is you had so many black people cheering you on as you talk to a black man as if he's a black boy. Unbelievable. What purpose are you serving in this sector? You know, I sit back and I reflect on this situation. And I think about a book that I, I read not too long ago, and that's the book entitled The Destruction of Black Civilization. And I've done a whole series on this book. I did a book review, a three-part series. Uh, for, so for people that want to learn more about that book, I recommend that you check out that series. But I'm going to reduce it to its core element here. This book pointed out how every time the African allowed the white man in his midst. The black man ended up being oppressed, ended up losing what he had. They point out examples of early Egypt and all other kinds of African civilizations. They point out how the the white man has a history of dividing and conquering black people, fueling conflicts between black people. There are examples in this book about how the European armed one side and then armed another side and had the brothers and sisters fighting each other and selling each other into bondage to that white man. And I won't say that what he, Josh is doing is comparable, but there is an analogy there. 
because he is not here to unite anybody. He's here to divide people. He's participating in the division of black people. And people are fine with that. You know, they're defending him, you know, and attacking me, accusing me of racism for speaking the truth. The Native American trusted the white man when he came here to America. What happened to the Native American? He was wiped out and his land was stolen. Completely wiped out and his land was stolen. And on top of that, as Kwame Ture pointed out, that white man romanticized the genocide against the native people. People say, well, we should all welcome any and everybody as a brother as a sister, regardless of race. They have the we are the world mentality. And as I said in the comments section, instead of having that kind of mentality, I live in the real world. I see it for what it is. My views are grounded in history. In the name of progress and tolerance, we allow people to come up into our communities and set up businesses. And when it was all said and done, the black man had nothing. And his entire community, um, its economic structure ended up being controlled by outsiders. We had these black organizations they form coalitions. They open their arms to others. But instead of forming coalitions based on equality and mutual respect, what you have is a situation where African Americans are furthering someone else's interests instead of their own. In fact, they are putting someone else's interests way above their own. That has happened time and time again. And sometimes people get the idea that because someone is a quote unquote liberal, that they mean well. Malcolm X gave us the analogy of the fox and the wolf. That's what you have when you look at the conservative and when you look at the liberal despite some of their differences, at the end of the day, they are about advancing their interests first and foremost. At the end of the day, they are both indoctrinated with the myth and the lie of white supremacy. At the end of the day, they don't look at us as their equals. They really don't. And often these people that we want to say are liberal and progressive, often they are condescending and paternalistic. They see themselves as having the white man's burden to take care of the lesser people, the little people. They have to educate the ignorant ones. That's their mentality, and that's the mentality of this guy, Josh. When you listen to him on the Mike Mills show, he's talking to the people as if he's teaching them something as if he's teaching these ignorant colored folk. And some people have been so programmed 
that they accept that role. They accept the role of being a student to a white boy. And I'll just end on this note. I call him a boy because he's looks like a teenager. I don't even know if he's reached his 20s yet. He looks like he's in high school. And, you know, I will say this in response to one of the comments that this troll made. He said something to the effect that uh, I would be up in arms if some white person called a black man a boy, but yet I'm using the term white boy to describe him. As I said before, my description of him as a boy is because of his age. He's obviously very young. But to compare that to what has happened to our people is absurd at best. A black man in this society wasn't accepted or viewed as a man, no matter how old he was. He could be a, a grandfather and he had to listen to some younger white man call him boy or in some Kurt cases, a little white boy calling a black man a damn boy, completely emasculating the black man. So don't give me that stuff. Don't compare the two because they don't compare at all. Not at all. Black man was deprived of his humanity. And before I go, I want to add a couple of points. As I said at the beginning, I pointed out how I was disgusted to hear African Americans call each other niggers and coons in the presence of that white boy. And when I said that, um, you know, I received a couple of comments with respect to that. And one of the comments basically said, why are you so concerned about how white people perceive you? Or how, you know, why are you concerned about how this white guy perceives black people? And I want to, you know, respond to that. The first thing I'll say is this. It's not just about this individual white guy. It's about our image, the image that we project to the world, whether Josh is on the program or not. We should be conscious of the images that we put out here on YouTube. There are videos here on YouTube that find their way on racist sites like Chimp Mania. They take little clips of black people acting foolish to project an image of black people, to say that all black people behave a certain way, to project a negative image of black people. And these negative images are important because they affect our lives. They affect public policy. They affect what happens when we interact with the police. When you have a popular perception that black people are naturally violent, are naturally hostile, are thuggish. When a police officer kills a black man, they can easily justify it by portraying the victim as a thug, as a criminal. And because there's a popular notion that African Americans are somehow more violent than others or more criminal than others, it becomes acceptable to kill a black man. It becomes justifiable. That's what happened with Trayvon Martin. That's what happened with Mike Brown. And that happens all over this country. So that's a prime example of why our image is important. We should be very concerned about what kind of images we put out here. But instead of being concerned about that reality, you have people basically posturing, trying to make a point, trying to beat somebody in some kind of debate. 
they're more concerned about that. They're more concerned about defending this white guy that comes out of nowhere and invades our sector. So that's the first point that I wanted to make. Um, the last point that I'll make in conclusion is this. I mean, there's nothing wrong with people sharing their views. That is not my issue. This is not a situation where somebody merely shares their opinions every now and then. This person is practically a co-host on the Mike Mills program. He's all involved in black people's business. See, this sector is like a dysfunctional family. No matter how messed up your family is, you don't involve outsiders in your family business. I mean, that's one of the basic lessons that people learn. You don't air your family business. You don't side with outsiders against your family members. That's just common sense.